Dry needlings roll in alleviating pain from trigger points in muscles myofascial pain syndrome. A condition characterized by the presence of trigger points, TRPs, in muscles, has prompted various needling treatments. Among them, dry needling stands out as a popular approach in certain healthcare professions. This technique involves the skilled use of thin filiform needles to penetrate the skin, stimulating myofascial trigger points, musculature, and connective tissue for managing neuromusculoskeletal disorders. Unlike wet needling, which includes injections, dry needling does not introduce any substances into the trigger point area. This blog post delves into the clinical application, safety considerations, and effectiveness of dry needling in addressing myofascial pain. Understanding Dry Needling The American Physical Therapy Association, APTA, defines dry needling as a skilled intervention that uses thin filiform needles to penetrate the skin, stimulating myofascial trigger points, muscles, and connective tissue for managing neuromusculoskeletal disorders. Similarly, the Australian Society of Acupuncture Physiotherapists describes it as a rapid, short-term needling approach to altered or dysfunctional tissues, aiming to improve or restore function. This may involve needling of myofascial trigger points, periosteum, and connective tissues. Dry needling, often combined with electrical current to create modalities like electrical dry needling or percutaneous electrolysis, has gained popularity. In comparison to other needling therapies, such as injections or acupuncture, the current paper focuses on the rationale for the clinical application of dry needling for myofascial pain. Clinical application. The local twitch response, a widely adopted needling approach for managing trigger points is the fast in, fast out method described by Hong. This technique entails inserting the needle into the trigger point until the first local twitch response is elicited. The local twitch response involves a brief and sudden contraction of a trigger point taut band, linked to the sensitivity of dysfunctional motor end plates. Research by Hong suggests that needle penetration resulting in local twitch responses is more likely to lead to subsequent pain relief than needle penetration without such responses, regardless of the introduction of substances. However, the number of local twitch responses needed for a positive outcome has been a subject of debate. Patients often perceive the local twitch response as an uncomfortable sensation during treatment. Clinicians must communicate this possibility to patients before the procedure cautioning that needle contact with a trigger point may cause muscle twitching or a distant flash of pain. Some clinicians propose using referred pain, in addition to or instead of the local twitch response, during dry needling. Referred pain, when elicited during the clinical examination of a trigger point, can be monitored during the needling procedure. Adverse events and safety clinicians practicing dry needling must adhere to guidelines for safe practice. The needle is considered an extension of the clinician's finger, emphasizing the importance of proper identification of the trigger point area before insertion. Deep knowledge of human anatomy and the patient's clinical status is crucial for minimizing adverse events. While the risk of adverse events is generally small when experienced clinicians apply needling therapies, cases of significant complications, such as pneumothorax, puncturing the stomach, cardiac tamponade, epidural hematoma, hemiplegia, or infection, have been documented. Proper training and caution are imperative to mitigate potential serious complications associated with needling therapies. Post-needling induced pain or soreness patients undergoing dry needling are often advised about the potential presence of soreness after the procedure, termed post-needling induced pain or soreness. This common minor adverse event can impact patient satisfaction and treatment adherence. Post-needling soreness is thought to result from neuromuscular damage generated by consecutive needling insertions into the muscle. Clinicians employ various treatment modalities after dry needling to reduce post-needling-induced pain.